Ah, this is my friend Conrad Helst. Actually, I'm grateful to him because when I started getting interested in Hindus and their problems and their genocide, the first thought that I got and the most accurate was Conrad. So I can say that he's my guru in terms of, you know, Indology. Uh, so today, Conrad, I wanted to ask you a few questions mm -hmm. on current topic. Yeah. You know, what do you think about the situation of Hindus at the moment in India under the Narendra Modi government? Well, um, for Hindus, the situation is more relaxed. That is definitely clear. Uh, there was a certain siege mentality uh, starting a little bit under Nehru, definitely coming to the fore under Indira Gandhi, and very acute in the last years of the UPA government, uh, with things like the uh, communal violence bill, it was 100% anti-Hindu, the uh, Right to Education Act, uh, which, you know, could perhaps be justified on social grounds, but then turned anti-Hindu, when the minority schools obtained the right to uh, stay aloof from that. Uh, so anyway, that, that was the situation before 2014. So at least this government is not anti-Hindu. Whether it is pro-Hindu, that is a question. You see, in the uh, first BJP government, that could hardly be detected. And uh, the... Uh, devotees of Narendra Modi even pretty uh, fanatically defended the record of the BJP in power even they, they, they could never show anything for the Hindus there was some developmental uh, progress and of course projects like the uh, building of toilets for every family and so on they made a lot of difference tangibly uh, for, for common people which largely explains his uh, electoral victory. Uh, you, but your expectation of Mr. Narendra Modi have been fulfilled? Not entirely, no. Um, Why? So, uh, the um, specifically Hindu issues have not been addressed. Though a beginning has been made in the second uh, Modi government, especially, you know, and to everybody's surprise, there was 5th of August 2019 when. Uh, the situation in Kashmir was normalized. You see, nothing special happened about Kashmir. The situation before that was exceptional, and now it became normal again. Kashmir became a simple part of India, the way that every province in every country right. is just a part of the country. Right. Right. Um, then, uh, something that was not really done by the uh, Modi government, but that significantly coincided in time, with it was the Ayodhya verdict, which again was a normalization. You see, uh, how to explain that to, to outsiders, that some big event has happened, thousands of people have died over it, governments have fallen over it, uh, simply because Hindus are now managing a Hindu uh, place of pilgrimage. Right, it right. is a perfectly normal situation. Well, what about the protest uh, against the CIA and the yes. national census? Now that is something else. You see, that is the first time that the Modi government really identified itself with Hindu civilization. Um, is because, that why the Muslims are revolting? Well, uh, it's only part of it because they also had a grudge against the Kashmir reform, right. against something else that happened under Modi, though again it wasn't done by Modi, namely the, uh, the verdict uh, about triple talaq, right. which, which then was taken up by Modi and cast into law. Um, so, you see, they were unhappy about that, but it was hard to you know, identify it as communal or discriminatory or something. But that pent-up anger now comes out. Mm. And so this time, uh, they have really identified with Hindu civilization less with Islam right. by simply acknowledging the reality that uh, the minorities are being persecuted in the neighboring Islamic countries. Right. And that India has a certain responsibility to those not as radical as 
with the law of return that uh, you, guarantees every You don't think every this, uh, this law that targeting the, the illegal Bangladeshi Muslims as well as the Rohingyas? Well, you see, the Rohingyas are outside of the ambit of this law. Uh, you see, it only talks about Bangladesh, um, uh, Pakistan and Afghanistan. In Bangladesh, the Rohingyas, who in fact come from, they come from Bengal, Bangladesh, uh, yeah. um, are not persecuted. And, um, but they won't get Indian nationality. Well, in principle, you see, this law isn't about that. In, in effect, you see, they have come into India, and, and if there. they play their cards well, they they'll get... end up getting nationality. Right, right. The way that millions of Bangladeshi Muslims are yeah. in India and have Indian absolutely, nationality. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, that is a big problem. But you hope, are you hopeful about India? Now, you, you have been in India for quite a few days now. Are you feeling that there is hope now amongst the Hindus of India? Well, uh, I'm not so sure that the Modi's policies make that much of a difference. Like he has very much continued the earlier policy of appeasement. Only he hasn't gone out of his way to add much new of appeasement. And um, so they feel that they can't get away with anything that they want anymore. For example, um, both, uh, you know, specialists, insiders in both West Bengal and in Tamil Nadu have told me about uh, Islamic uh, terrorist uh, schemes that uh, the police came to know about already in the past and that they never did anything against. Right. Now, under the BJP, they are not stopped. You see, their hands are not tight anymore. The BJP isn't doing anything but it allows the police to act when it should right, normally right. act. So it's better, we are, we are looking uh, it, at a it is better a, India. It is a tangible uh, progress, yes. Right, it's right. again a normalization. Yeah. It is immense corruption uh, under Congress is now no longer there. Right, right. Thank you so much, Colin. Thank mm. you very much for your...